I have a question that's important to me and to many people who are, who are, are searching for something or seeking perhaps what you call self-realization or Sahaja Yoga or something. We, some of us don't know exactly what it is. Yes, yes. And we find that there are many teachers. How do we recognize those teachers that you might call fraudulent from the real ones? It's so difficult because they, they all seem to be able to inspire us in certain ways and give us experiences. How do we know who is <coughs> teaching something that's true and who is being deceptive? First and foremost thing is, anybody who lives on your earnings is not a guru. A guru will never live on the earnings of his disciples. But here there are people who have built palaces, bought aircrafts and cars and this. I mean, this is something one should understand. It's so, so open to you to understand. I mean, this, I cannot understand more obvious thing that this one is that it's a parasitic living and you cannot have a parasites. As your gurus, they can be parasites, but not your gurus. That's one of the things. And if you can... <laughs> I mean, you can retain some people, you know. If you want, because you are rich people, you can retain some. That's a different point. But you cannot have them as gurus. Guru has to be a higher personality, you see. Now, <coughs> you have seen Christ was such a great incarnation. He didn't take any money from anyone. He was a carpenter's son and he used to do carpentry himself and he lived like a modest man. He never lived with big cars and big houses. It's not necessary because such a person is himself is a very big king, you see, like a big emperor. He doesn't need anything, an emperor doesn't need anything because he, nothing can give him comfort except that he himself is in complete comfort. So such a person doesn't want anything. So you must see that such a person has no needs of comfort at all. He can sleep on the ground, he can sleep anywhere. Now, in this life, I should say I come from a quite a wealthy family or married to another wealthy man, you can say that way, <laughs> according to your own relative ideas. But <coughs> to me, I can sleep anywhere, I have no problem. I have no problem of food, no problem of sleeping anywhere, no comfort, and it's, I find it is beyond my self-respect to live on the earnings of others, it's not proper. But you are my children, supposing now you bring a flower to me or something, it's all right. But I can't have a palace out of your money and all those things, it's absurd, absolutely absurd. So this is one thing one should know, that it pampers our ego, that we can purchase our guru. We can purchase our Self-Realization. You see, this is a very subtle pampering and that's how people accept, you see. They don't want to accept a person who says, who cannot offer anything, it's too much for them. Or maybe that, secondly, could be that people think that if you pay something, then you get attached to it, you go through it, whatever it is. Say you have paid uh, for a ticket, and you find that the whole play is horrid, you can't bear it, but you have to go through it because you have paid for it. That's a human nature, you yeah. see. That's a human nature, I've seen that they do it, and that's what it, it works out. But this is a very gross level, I'm telling you. But another says should be that in these modern times it is promised that you will become prophets. You have to become prophets. So you must see, have you become prophets out of these? The easiest is to see the disciples of this man, any X, Y, Z who says he's a guru. Now what is happening to the disciple? Is he a free person? Has he got any knowledge? Has he got any mastery? What has he achieved by being with that person? Now you have seen here there are Sahaja Yogis, one better than the other. You talk to them, they are knowledge. Some of them have met me only for, say, eight days or so, they have become knowledge. So what have they achieved, you should say? What is their style of life, their pattern of life, how they behave? And there cannot be any privacy about it, you see, like mafia, you don't tell that and you don't say that and you shouldn't do that. Of course, in Sahaja Yoga, the truth is exposed gradually, but it is not like this that if you uh, give some money, nobody knows. Everybody knows everything in Sahaja you see? Now, supposing we have to build an ashram, say, for example. All right, you build your ashram, you collect your money, do what you like and know about it. I have nothing to do with it. 
Also among yourself you should know how you got the money, how you spent it, what is the expense and all that. Because ashram you can pay for, but not for your realization. <coughs> and this is one thing is very important, that what you get out of it is important, that you should become a prophet. Have you become a prophet? Then thirdly, you must know that if you are going from one to another, what we call guru shopping business, that means you have not found it, otherwise you would just settle down. But some people are so weak that they do settle down with one and are finished with them. You must always see the people who go to these gurus, what have they got? Have they got their transformation? Because this is the age of transformation. Mataji, what about teachers or gurus who produce miracles? You go to a, a guru who will materialize something out of the air and say this is divine. That's a, that's this a is all jugglery. It's all jugglery. And also, you see, now supposing somebody says, I produce a diamond. Now these people come from India, why don't they solve the financial problem of India? <laughs> They, at every point they can be challenged. You should say that, then all right. One gentleman came to me and said that he gave me a diamond. I said, why you? How many diamonds you have? He said, hundreds. Then I said, why did he give you? You should give to your driver who hasn't got a diamond. You see, that is what it is. So it is all jugglery. You should see those who materialize. What have they given you? They have to give you something eternal. If they talk about God, God is not going to give you di diamond. Which God has given diamonds to people? Have you heard of anyone giving diamonds? No. <laughs> so you should ask for something which is the highest, which is the supreme most. Now the fourth thing, <coughs> which is very important, that whatever experiences you get, for example, some people start just like jumping, some start shouting, some start behaving like animals, and they say, oh, that's what is coming out, you're taking out, you see. They feel very bad, they get horrible diseases, they get into troubles and they get into pains and all sorts of things and contortions. They say, now your subconscious is coming out. Nothing has to be brought out, that's one thing you must know. The subconscious, as I told you, is on the left-hand side and the supraconscious on the right-hand side. What you have to do is to ascend in the center and come up Above your head is the super-consciousness. And when you become that, then you develop collective consciousness. So those who want you to become like frogs, again, you must know that you are not going to become frogs anymore now. <laughs> That's not any way evolution. The evolution has to go higher, not becoming frogs or earthworms, you see. And if you start crawling, it is simple mesmerism. Anybody mesmerizes, can do these tricks, you see. It's simple mesmerism. And then to believe that now you are surrendered and all that is all nonsense, you see. It has no meaning to, to realization. In realization you just become the master, you become the master of it. There are many people in this country who came <coughs> and lured you by their talks also, talking big about Brahma, Atma, Tattva, this, that and everything. That is not the way you can, that is what is just the pendulum moving from Christian sermon to Hindu sermon and from Hindu sermon to Islamic sermon, from there to the Rabbi sermon, you see, it goes on like that, you see, that's not the way. You have to rise higher within yourself and that's why those who lecture about these things are really sometimes can be very, very dangerous and so many have died of cancer, this, that, I don't know what to say, that people who go to these people get into very bad troubles and suffer so much. And then on top of that, when all this happens, they say, you must suffer. <laughs> That's a very good excuse, you must suffer. You must pay to suffer. You pay money to suffer. And then people go on suffering. Now one thing I have to tell you, that Christ has suffered for us. We don't have to suffer anymore. Those who deny His sufferings will have to go for suffering. All right, have it. But He suffered for us. There is no need for us to suffer anymore. When He is awakened within us, He takes away all that is our ego, means our karmas, our superego, that is our conditioning, completely removed and you become one with the Divine. There is no need for anybody to suffer. 
And this idea of suffering is all nonsensical. You should not suffer at all. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it's over. <laughs>